Do Dragon Ball fans actually watch their series? Let's talk about that. Hello! Uh, Our first Z finally. watch episode in the studio. In the this studio. Time around. We did a little warm up. We talked about this over on the Patreon in the reaction to these episodes, which of course you can sign up to be a key member both on here or Patreon. Uh, wherever you are, even if you're an audio listener, go to the platform, uh, get a bunch it's, of bonus content. It's patreon.com slash key moments. moments. We'll, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about all that a little bit more today. I thought everyone was, uh, everyone was right. Yeah, the worst has happened. This is, this is our... We are in the worst timeline. This is it. This, well, I, I guess we don't know for sure, but there's been a, an ongoing joke, I thought. Confirmed. Uh, the worst case scenario, people have been saying they don't even know about fake Namek. Um, yeah, which did not sound so. real. It did not sound plausible or possible. Why would you need to write in a fake planet into the arc? Yeah, it makes it makes no sense to me. No, but man, who knows? I mean, we're not there yet. We're not. It's kind of like the cliffhanger that we ended up on. But yeah, this was like, honestly, I know. Look, I know we should be happy. It's our first time getting back in a Z, but I'm depressed, dude. We did. Oh, we, we didn't even mention. We did two episodes for this. I was just. I was about to bring it up. Bad time to put ice in my mouth. But we are, of course, talking today, Friends or Foes, episode 39, as well as mm -hmm. Held Captive. But Dotto, I didn't tell you what the topic of the show was. Oh, we have a topic. Besides that, we have a topic today. Okay, wow. I didn't know that. Inspired by Bulma in the episode, bringing up Raditz. Oh. <laughs> it was like a crazy... I thought you were going to bring up something else Bulma inspired, but Okay. <laughs> We can talk about that too. I don't know about that. Uh, but no, I, I one of the recent comments. So I did a short. We've talked about this on the podcast. I did a short where I condensed down Dragon Ball Z essentially into fifty eight seconds, less so, than a minute even. Yes. Mm. So one of my most recent comments on that was Goku doesn't have a brother. Okay. <laughs> And I was like, is that just an emotional context? I was like, no, I definitely think they just meant like, that's not Goku's brother. And I was just like, it is, it, it reigns true to the meme that Dragon Ball fans don't actually watch their show. I mean, at that point, what can you even say? You know, like sometimes you just get comments like that. I'm just, you know, I think we've all said some dumb stuff like that eventually. Yeah, I think, I think that specifically right now, the fact that you and I couldn't remember, I, by the way, we've had some people call us out. Have we? About we're what? fake fans because we don't remember fake no, Namek. No, 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 not true. We're fake fans, Dotto. No, 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 not true. I, I, it's not true. Fake Namek shouldn't have been in the show. They should have written it out. We're not fans because we 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 didn't realize that fake Namek was approaching. Can you think of anything else besides like that comment? We're not believing Goku was Raditz's brother. Can you think of anything else that's like a, a very much so like Dragon Ball fans don't watch their own show kind of kind of moment? I don't know. Uh, usually when I see that being said, I'm not even gonna lie. Usually it's about like some minute shit, like the amount of sensu beans used in, in all of Dragon that's, Ball Z. And some people will be like, that's I don't where know, someone like can really get me like, oh yeah, well, how many times have they used Kamamiha? I'm like, the fuck? Why would I know that? I don't know. You asked me a TOP character's name, I wouldn't know that either. But when uh, was the first time that Kamamiha was ever used? What I chapter, Dotto? Uh, what episode? Before? Episode seven? See, I know these things because I'm a real fan and fake Namek shouldn't be my gotcha mode. But, but mostly on your topic, I would say I would mostly see that with the games. Um, that's more of like a just gaming thing in general, though. Not going to lie. Uh, just, and the thing is, I'll get gaslit. You know who really it's, it's is that? It's the 47th chapter of the Dragon Ball manga. Oh, drag, Oh, we're counting the OG Dragon Ball? I thought we were doing Z. OG, all of it. Because uh, Dotto. Was it really 47 chapters? Z's not it seems real. like a long time. Z's not real, man. 40, I'm, no, I get, I'm thinking Dra volumes because it happens in like volume two. Dragon Ball. It happened at the end of volume one. No, no. Chapter 47, though? Yeah, because I, I remember. Well, the first Kamehameha is when Roshi puts the fire out. But then the second Kamehameha is immediately after that when Goku does it on a police car. Uh, just I think it was a police car anyway, but it's like a smaller one. Not as effective. It's not. I mean, you could even argue maybe it's not a true Kamehameha, but I would count it uh, as his first. Uh, and I thought it was good. But going back, I was going to say, people getting stuff wrong confidently messes me up because I'm inclined to believe. Anything said in confidence, I'm inclined to believe. 
And who really gets that bad is Yu-Gi-Oh players. I have done so <laughs> many goddamn Yu-Gi-Oh videos where I'll get a timestamp and be like, and don't get me wrong, I've also gotten a lot of comments where they were actually right. But I've gotten so many times where like, you are a genuine idiot. You have no idea how to play the game. This is the worst video I've ever seen. Low key, I think he censored that for this. I, I did actually. Why did you not play Monster Reborn? You could have brought your monster back from the graveyard. Only to find out, I'll be like, oh yeah, I guess I didn't know. And then I'll find out, no, I couldn't special summon that turn or something like that. Like there are rules in play that change the way the cards work and they just, they're they are acting like th those rules weren't in play. I hate when that happens. That is my biggest pet peeve. Just read, bro. I, I know. I, the thing is, I shouldn't even be the one saying that, but now you're forcing me to say that. <laughs> I'm wrong so often that I listen to the, you and now I look even more wrong. Man. Twitch chat's also pretty bad with that. Yeah. Also, wanted to talk about something we talked about two weeks ago. Just want to clarify that God wasn't used for its speed in the manga. Blue is faster. But the reason they used God into blue was to preserve stamina. <clears throat> yeah, it's like a... Because when we talked about it, we talked about it. And I was saying what I thought would be cool about a moment, which then everyone was like, but don't you realize that, um, guess what? that was used in the T.O.P. And I do remember it being used, but like it was so quick. I feel like whatever he was doing. Um, God? God to blue. Yeah, it was like a fast change. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. I, I I'm talking like cool. a full-on fight. I don't remember a full... Was there a full-on fight in T.O.P. where he's going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth? It was like a moment of a fight. I don't know if it was a full fight. That's what I'm... That's... Yeah, that's what I'm... That's what I meant. But I guess I did misunderstand because I did not think it was a stamina based thing. I thought it actually was a speed based thing. So I, I'll, I'll own up to that. I thought I thought that was the case. Again, haven't read that. I'm just going. Yeah, off you know, by that. owning up to it, you here's over your Dragon Ball card forever. Oh, is that what that's doing? Yeah. I'm so I'm supposed to be like the people you were just talking about and confidently, Deny. Deny. confidently say yes. Like this is not like really what I should be doing is saying no. That's bullshit. Yes, exactly. No, that's bullshit because God is faster because of this one yes. thing I saw this yes. one time. Deny, flip, reject anything you can do, bro. <sighs> anything you can do to keep your Shit. hands on the Dragon Ball fan card. Because if you okay. get 10 hole punches, you get assigned SH figure arts, and that's, you need that. It can be anyone you want as long as it's from the Dragon Ball anyone series. Anyone I want? Yes, bro. What would you choose? Is there like a rare one that uh, is actually worth something? Well, there's quite a few. I, but I, I thought maybe you also meant like I got to like get one. Like I, like, I could have them create me one. What would you create? Well, we don't have a Janemba yet. Okay. We don't have a... That seems like a pretty big miss. Like, no Janemba? We don't... Yeah, I agree. We don't have uh, an actual proper, uh, like, Super Gogeta. Super Gogeta is not one. Doesn't have one. Okay, that's weird. They did Gogeta blue, but no Super Gogeta. So they have, like, DBS so Gogeta, but they don't have... they're just movie. Yes. This brings up another topic, but go on. I, I do want to get into uh, that. And then I would obviously take an, uh, Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta... I would take There's it. no Gogeta? No Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta. Wow. There's, 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 there's a lot no, of misses. There's no Omega. Wow. I mean, that one's less surprising than Gogeta, but yeah. Uh, there's actually quite, there's, there's quite a few. Okay. Well, a Bojack you, would be cool. There's no Bojack either? There's no Bojack. All right. Well, I, I consider me stumped. I did not know there were so there, many nah, missing we're, pieces. We're still missing quite a few, actually. There's, uh, a lot, there's a lot missing. Part of that brings up, I was talking to Rhyme about this earlier. Well, it was mostly like for an intro to his video, but I actually do genuinely believe it. Uh, do you kind of believe that Janemba fell off popularity wise within people that like Dragon Ball? Wait, I remember, do you think Janemba fell off fan wise? No, you don't think he fell off. You think a Janemba like video would do just as good now as it did back in the day? I think Janemba still has some pull. Yes, because of his unique design. Mm, okay. Both of us. Our opinion was that Janemba has fallen off quite a ways. I would say, I think Janemba back in the day was almost like up there. He was, he was one of the all time goats of like, you know, Janemba, oh, Janemba is so cool. What a cool villain. Nowadays though, it's like Janemba. Eh, yeah, you're right. I Never, mind. Never mind. I, I went, I, I went to uh, do a little bit of my own research. A little research. Yeah. You got some analytics. My Ultra Janemba video for Legends did 87,000 for my reaction. My summons and gameplay did uh, 83. Okay. But then the, the same video where I masked it and didn't technically say it was a Janemba video is almost at 400,000. So. Okay, there you go. You got to hide that it's Janemba nowadays. Back uh, in the day, you used... Before I still super, think Janemba's sick. Yes, but we're old. We're old. 
I guarantee there's going to be a, a video where you put Janemba in the thumbnail, though, from Sparking Zero. Probably, if he gets in the game. Especially if he's DLC. Yeah, no, I, I, I mean, you can... You should do it once, right? But I feel like, you know, that's any character. Most characters. If they're DLC, I mean, come on. Most likely they can get one thumbnail. Huh. The only character I ever thought that was I like... Guess, I guess I didn't... I, I, I don't know. I feel like Janimbo was like mid, at least mid tier, but I guess he's more low tier actually. Probably. Well, I, I think he's still around. He can still, I think, be mid tier. I, but compared to where he was, like I believe at a certain point he was very high tier in I, popularity. I, yeah, I agree. And I believe he he's is no more, Broly though. He, no, he wasn't. But he could compete back in the day. I think he was right there with Broly. Maybe it's, like this, like this. And for audio listeners, see, I'm holding my hands up with one hand slightly lower than the other. Broly is so, Broly's like, Broly's a big deal, man. He was. No, I, I always said, I, I think I've said this on the podcast. As a kid, my interpretation was always Bardock was for uh, the Japanese fans and Broly was for the Americans. I don't know where I read that, but I firmly grilled into my head and I believe it. Every Everybody loves Broly. Let me see if, bro, if my, ult, there's an Ultra Z Broly. We're, you're the uh, you're really into facts and logic. You're you're checking it all. Uh, out. Let's let's see. The reaction did fifty thousand more. The summoning video did eighty thousand more. So Broly's higher than Janemba. And technically, technically, I was the channel was uh, older and less thorough. Uh, like the size, like I was smaller at the yeah. time too, and it still did better. That's these, all the proof you need because these aren't like new views. Wrap right it now. up. That's a case closed. Damn. I will say, though, one thing I am a little worried about, and do you think OG Broly hasn't been confirmed for Sparking Zero yet? All right. So speaking of Sparking Zero, one of the DLC in Sparking Zero is going to be Daima, Dotto. I was, I was shocked. I'm not going to lie. I think we talked about this recently. I did not read that paper at all confirming that. Uh, and I just I did not assume big. they would do that. Yeah, it said Dragon it it's pretty Ball big. Daima. And Superhero. And superhero with the gammas, by the way, not with beast. So I still think beast is going to be that pre-order character, but we'll we'll see. Mm, yeah, I mean, it has to be right. I think I I mean I think it's the only thing that makes sense. So with Dima, someone brought up something, and I found I thought the I thought this was interesting to talk about, especially as we're like getting really close to all of all of this. And maybe by the time you're watching this, actually, this one this is going to go up the weekend that we're getting info. So this is going up the day we're getting info. We're, well, we're, we can date this right now. We can, we could just be, this is. this is, this is our guest right now. Yep. So I saw something. I was like, that's very interesting. Is that it's only, it hasn't actually been confirmed. The total episode count of Dima from anywhere. I don't, I, I hope it's a short show. I hope it's like 20 episodes. So apparently there, there's the possibility that they've pre pre-produced 20 but there's going to be more than that no dude and, and i the, don't want that and it, and it went into it went into like full production or whatever and like they, they have like all this lead time dude i don't so that way they can be weekly for a while so it could actually go on much longer than just 20 episodes i don't want that i do not want to be what look i know we talked about everything i want diva to feel like a I, special. I, I, lo I love the idea of Dima being like 24 episodes, like a one it's season It's a special, thing. a nice little story. And it's... Maybe you can even work it into the, you know, mainline continuation, you know, somehow. But like, I don't want this to be super two. Like, I don't want this to be like another Dragon Ball franchise. I just want it to be like one yeah. thing real quick. What if what if we're literally reacting to like episode 132 of Dragon Ball Dino? Like, I don't want that. I will actually like I'll say this right now so that I can come back and say this. I'm going to be so depressed, bro. Go ten and trunks. What if it is sick as shit though? Go like, ten and trunks should not be in diapers for that. I I believe in Dima. I do. I I'm starting I, to I believe a little more in that. And I have no reason to because we haven't seen yeah, much exactly, on the exactly. sale, but bro, you know, I saw people on Twitter getting hyped that a Dima like dollar figurine, like a little uh, a mirror glass thing got leaked. Not you, even revealed. You it was know how leaked. bad it is that you got to get hype on that, bro. Bro, I posted uh, it was like Dima fans are eating the food. It was like, oh, were, I saw that. It <laughs> it's was like the, a tiny little bee, yeah. bro. They're cutting it up. <laughs> they have been radio silent. <sighs> on that. Although to be fair, apparently like, I don't know how much you keep up with Dragon Ball Twitter. Uh, not beef, but like interactions between, you know, the, the real Dragon Ball heads, the clash of information titans. But um, apparently Daima info like leaked or 
was in this circle of people that knew about it. They were just going back and forth talking about it. And uh, apparently a lot of details came about about what the actual show is about. Some stuff that was just like theorized is now pretty much confirmed. Stuff like that. You see any of that? Not even a, not even a lick. It was mostly just like... Uh, it's Unless you're talking about a thread that you chimed in on. <laughs> Something... It was like that. But was I between, could not be asked to read that entire thread. So. It was between those two combatants, yes. At the time, they were like semi combat They weren't like beef and beef. And That'd be a very fun uh, podcast topic at some point, maybe. Um, but yes, it's like pretty much confirmed to be like a demon realm kind of thing. Stuff branching off of like Bobbity and stuff like that. Which I think most people could assume considering the big trailer showed all Majin Buu footage, stuff like that. But yeah. it's looking like it's going to be a demon realm and then like demon angels, demon Bro. shin. What are they called? Toa shows up. Right here. They just beam in on the podcast. Cut it. No, 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 not Toei. Oh, to Toa. Toa. Oh, you thought you were just pitching a plot. I thought you were saying Toei is going to shut us down. No, 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 no. Toa. I'm going to be honest. Is Toa the, the girl one? Yes. Okay. And she created Mira. I'm going to be up. And Mira's the guy one. Yes. And who's the, and Demigra is? Demigra is like the, the king. I don't. I don't know, dude. I don't, I don't, I don't, well, don't thanks know. for nothing, dude. You two out of three is not good enough. I don't. I don't and now know you're down here with me. It looks like you. Demigra, know usually referred to as a de as demon god Demigra, after his ascension, is the main antagonist of Dragon Ball Z universe. I just know I beat that guy's ass. In god universe. of Demon Realm. He's hell bent on destroying history to create a new one where he can reign freely as a god of time. I guess um, like demon stuff. I guess is a pretty interesting avenue of dragon ball to go into mm -hmm. it's not it wasn't i wouldn't say it was my number one on the list but i mean we're getting pretty low honestly i'm waiting for us to wrap around back to the Sh shadow dragons but i do feel like that's a big finale kind of arc um so i'm good on saving that but the demon realm looks like we're heading there a little demon put a curse on goku made him a baby made goten and trunks put back in diapers appreciate that that's great um definitely not upset about that at all one step further away from adult go thanks <sighs> Do you know how cool adult go tanks would be? Dude, I love this design of Demigra. It's a it's a Dokkan art, but like it's uh to the audio listeners, it's the he has a blue tail, but like still mostly human, red hair, dark eyes. I just think I think that that looks way better than his normal looking like this. I like both. I think both are fine. I didn't like his mon he's a monster form, right? Where he's like a blue, yeah, like gets, fully a blue he gets lizard. like really big. Yeah, I thought that was a little ugly, but maybe that's like it was supposed to be. You know? No, I mm, that. Let me see that. Yeah, I mean, if it was like in a show, right? If it was in a show and it was animated and it was like a final 10 minutes kind of thing, like it could be cool. But like, you know, as an iconic design, am I rating it up highly? No, probably not. Anyway, Nano, speaking of iconic designs, iconic moments, never forgetting moments. We did watch two episodes that we should talk about. We did. Let's talk about them. What's so, episode one? Here we go. Starting with friends or foes. Uh, I'm not going to try to read the Japanese version of this, but the original Japanese title was friends or foes, children of the mysterious giant spaceship. Spoilers. It's the, it's the fourth. Yeah. It's the fourth episode of the Namek saga and the 39th overall episode in the uncut Dragon Ball Z series. Mm -hmm. This episode first mm -hmm. aired in Japan on March 7th of 1990. Mm -hmm. Uh, which would be almost a year, almost a year. Does that sound right? I think I think so. Almost a year before Tree of Might would air. Uh, its original American air date was, close to Tree Might. was August 18th of 2005. Now, if that date sounds wrong to you and you are a viewer <laughs> like me, we grew up on the Ocean Dub and Funimation, when they came in, just said, all right, we'll pick up where Ocean Dub left off. And then once they finished it all and they're like, hey, we want to have our own definitive set of Z from beginning to end. They went ahead and re, uh, re basically dubbed for the first time ever the first like 68 episodes of Dragon Ball Z. So that is why the dub that we just listened to was the funny dub of the original Z of the original funny Z. That, I didn't think it was that humorous. So anyway, <laughs> uh, the, one of the craziest moments of friends or foes <laughs> to me is the fact that <laughs> Bulma is clearly shown drinking beer. She's an alcoholic in this episode. Not even clearly shown drinking beer. What like walk us through it, Nano? You clearly drinking beer is what? I want you to walk me through when she drinks it. Like ten seconds into the episode, 
that and 10 seconds into her day. She wakes up out of bed, surrounded in her own filth, disgusting picks filth. Picks up a can of beer. Picks up a can of beer, cracks it, and then does her best abusive father just, hey, you boys going to clean up my mess or what? <laughs> Immediately, that is the opening of the show. Dude, the, your Bulma impersonation is like crazy. Like, yeah, it was, we, the delivery on the show was a little... I didn't expect them to go that direction. But um, I will say something I do remember from this episode very intently, um, other than the the day drinking was uh, as she's talking to them, it's Krillin and Gohan are like mind training, which is sick. Have we ever seen that before? Or is it like made up in this episode to put some action in, uh, into a, like a, a situation on, where they can't on. really before do Before we go any further, oh, how much of, now that we have fully finished oh, that episode, yeah. how much of the episode do you think is real? Not, not a second. I, um, I think that there's a possibility that Goku at the hospital is real. Maybe. And I think that their training is possibly real. Maybe I would be interested. I think in the, the rest of real. it is completely like anime was like, Whew, what are we doing today? <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think I don't think anything with their tracking or especially the children of the lost spaceship or whatever. <laughs> I have none of those children are real. Those are all made up children. And also did Pierre Noah come back? You got it. You're going to stay tapped in on the podcast yep. to find that if you haven't rewatched the episode. In case you don't remember Pierre no was the leader of the orphans. Oh, ah, man, I them. said, I said we're going to come back to that, and I never did. What do you mean? They could become key members. Who? We never we never talked. We never actually dove in the, like, what being a key member was. To when? Earlier in the podcast. Oh, that, that moment's passed. I know. It's crazy. But you could watch our reactions to both these episodes by becoming key members, clicking the join button right here on YouTube, or going to patreon.com and watching over there. What are you, bet, what are you putting your bets on? No, I would say... You know what? I'm just gonna bet. I'm gonna I'm gonna take the under. I think nothing in this nothing. episode is canon. Okay. Not even a single. Not even a single. I will smidge. say this summary is crazy for this episode. Like I cannot like. Oh, that's probably canon stuff, man. I cannot believe. Like, look. Well, it, to be fair, fillers tends to have the most like written down because uh, it's like episode. Right? That like, is so much. No, nah, that's just all lore, dude. He showed me a big page of the wiki. It's like four pay four paragraphs MLA format. Also, I don't know when I'm gonna get to bring this up. I did want to bring this up. Your laptop looks crazy on the camera with like the hollow foil. Uh, uh, I, he's I, got like a limited edition like foil print SCR laptop skin, and it does look crazy on the camera. I, I feel like I did pretty good putting this on. Is that like a like a protect skin? Yeah, yeah, it looks. I mean, it looks pretty good on the camera. Anyway, that was a complete sideways segment. I know the audio listeners are in love with me pointing that out. You you went with you went with um, a Dragon Ball card game, but you know you know what it makes me think of like for real. Go ahead. It's like a camo skin in COD. Oh yeah. You see that? It is a very I know like it's very Gears of War. Like I had a Nasher that looked exactly like that during my shotgun battle era. Mm. You trying to play some Gears? Every day of my life. Trying to do a co-op run? Every day of my life. All right, so in this episode, we already talked about the fact that Bulma wakes up. One key detail about Bulma, which is like, okay, what was going on? Yep. She's she's in her underwear the entire episode. That's going to be... I, I don't think... That's not filler. That outfit, I think you can tell, is something that must have been drawn by Toriyama. It's going... Well... Okay, I just I'll fess up. It's burned into my brain as a core memory. She wears this for a long time. Does she really? I think so. Yeah. I'm telling you, bro. I am going to bust out the manga, and we're gonna find this out. We have to. I literally the manga is like ten feet. That yeah, way. we we gotta rip into it. See if we can. We're not ripping. Um, we gotta cement our opinions on this. I is that is that really how you say it? You don't cement. No. <laughs> now, I, now I'm confused, bro. Now, now I don't. I now I don't understand. Seamen, seamen. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't know. I, 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 I see what I see. The angle. Cement, cement, <laughs> cement, cement. What a oh the mental image battles. I'm really bad with ease. Like when, when all ease. Like like I say Gotenks wrong. I think it's like go. Isn't it like go? Go ten. Oh, go tanks is pretty fine. I, I, thought that, I, thought, I thought that was good. Go tanks. Yeah. I think I'm still saying it weird. Go tanks. I mean, I, I feel like I say it more with an A, like go tanks. Go tanks. Go tanks. I mean, that's fine. Yeah, I think that's good. Go tanks. Yeah, that's good. Hmm. I, 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 I didn't hear any. I any, worked with a brand recently that came back and they like were mad at me for, for not, an they, were, they weren't mad at me, but they were really like, can we fix that? And I'm like, you're you trying, know, to, you're that, trying to fix 33 years of uh, me bro, saying things this I way. I actually get upset about this. Because, I mean, I understand the brand's doing it, but yeah. I hate that people come back 
And luckily in this case, well, not luckily in this case, it's just an accent thing that you have that they want to correct. But with brands, it's unfortunate because uh, have you ever seen the famous clip of like Dylan and Cole Sprouse um, doing a Pokemon advertisement? Um, they did a Reddit AMA. I don't remember when, um, but they explain that story. It's like a famous joke. People comment because they're walking with the DS. And I think Cole or Dylan, one, one of them is playing go, I love Pokemon like move like like uh, I don't remember the game Diamond. I love Pokemon Diamond. Oh really? I'm more of a fan of Pokemon uh, Pearl. And they keep going Pokemon Pokemon, and they keep saying that. Um, <laughs> and then everybody just makes fun of them for the way they say Pokemon. And then in the AMA, they were like, "Why do you guys say Pokemon weird?" And they were like, "We don't. They forced us to say it like that, and it's fucking annoying." <laughs> Because <laughs> the brand really wants it to be Pokemon. Uh, and you can hear that in all of their advertisements throughout all the years. That's why when I like it's Pokemon Diamond, Pokemon Pearl, the, they will always have whoever they are paying to read it in the obnoxious, stupid way that nobody reads it. I, I've never heard anyone say Pokemon. It's always Pokemon. Yeah, but that's because that's how Americans, the Americans yearn to read it like that. Any English speaker yearns to read it like that. But the way they want it pronounced officially is Pokemon. Mm, okay. And right. uh, I, I just thought it was funny because people clowned on them for years. And I just imagined them the whole time fuming because they were like, I love Pokemon Pearl. Cut. Dude, it's Pokemon. No, it's not. No, it's not. bro. You're going to get us cyberbullied for years. We are going to be cyberbullied for years because of you. And they, they still went through with it. Although I imagine those guys. Have you... Have you seen any of the, the Zack and Cody shows? Yeah. They have to be like loaded, right? Like they were the face of Disney for... I don't think Disney paid that much. I mean, still, dude, they were like the face of Disney for years. Did you, did you, see, did you see that you were there with one of them? I did, which was kind of like... Did you run into him? No, I would have definitely asked to get a picture, though. That is like... They were the peak, dude. They were like the cool guys. Yeah, oh, I would have had to. I was I was kind of on my way out of watching like those shows, but like I did manage to see like Zach and Cody, um, Sweet Life or whatever. But then, but then here's the thing: when I was almost on my way out of watching all those types of shows, I started dating my wife, who, of course, you know, we were, we were like 15, 16 and everything like that. But her sister was four years younger than us, and we would hang out with her sister because she was kind of like our, like watchdog or whatever you know because mm -hmm. he was couldn't be alone i guess anyway and guess what we would watch those shows so i so i probably shouldn't uh, i probably was i de not probably i definitely have grown uh what was the sequel series sweet life on deck yes i definitely I wasn't watching that one on my own but i was watching that one still because i was hanging out with her i don't know if it's like childish shit but the reason i bring this up is because i have been re-watching those shows and they still make me laugh sometimes. Like those shows, what? Okay, I don't know if we can go into this on the podcast, but one of the bits is like because it's a cruise show, they sometimes go on excursions to other parts of the world. Okay, and when they do that, I mean, I think the, some of the episodes are pretty funny, but they do get very, very stereotypical about whatever country they're in. Um, for example, one of the ones that I thought was like. The, the most out of pocket I got, I think it got was this. They went to India and Zach and Cody ended up getting like forced to work in a call center and they were just working tech support in a call center. What? And I was like, this, I was like, this is really on the nose. And they go to uh, Japan. I watched this episode because this is like iconic. I didn't even know I was referencing Zach and Cody. They work for a company called Hashimoto Soda and they like do an advertisement for them and stuff. And they end up breaking the set, you know, some classic Zach and Cody chaos. Yeah. And then um, they get held captive and forced to taste test sodas. They try to break out and they're jumped by ninjas um, in Japan. And I thought, I was like, oh, ninjas. Yeah. Uh, so I, I mean, it's, just, it's literally shit like that. Like they go to country, most stereotypical hijinks ensue. Like um, they go to Italy and they're trying to get into a pasta. How restaurant. much Zach and Cody on deck have you been watching? Though? It's genuinely funny. It's also the other thing is it's also like they do have some sexist jokes in there. Like that's where the... Have, I tweet, this is the most, I reference this one all the time. It's like wage, it's like the, it's like they're doing like school news, like wage gaps at 38%. And then Zach's like, let's shoot for 40. Like for team men. He's like, let's good job guys. Let's oh, shoot for 40. Okay. I see. Got it. Iconic joke. Great, great, great stuff. It's, it's pretty good. It's pretty good still. How the 
fuck did we get from episode 39 of DBZ all the way to Sweet Life Look, this is what we got to do. We got to bring the episodes in earlier and then those spawn in the uh, the topics, bro. Because now, look, we're like 35 minutes in the podcast and I could talk about Zach and Cody for another 40 minutes if we wanted to. Anyway, shout outs to... Because, bro, this is, this is what I'll end it on. One thing I do want to say is every... Co- okay, this is a weird element of the show to appreciate because it's not an element of the show. But as somebody that grew up watching a lot of duo comedies and stuff, Mm -hmm. it always kind of sucks, even though it really shouldn't. Like Mythbusters, when you find out that the two main guys don't really fuck with each other like that, they're not friends. Or like even like OG Game Grumps, when John and Aaron were like, fuck you, we're not friends. Um, They're brothers. So when you're watching it, it's like, I know these guys still fucking hang out. Like now my impact of the show isn't, isn't flustered. Like, I know they, they hang out. They probably, like, do Thanksgiving and Christmas together or something like that. Anyway, that's my sweet life on deck talk. Um, <laughs> we can go ahead and get back into the, the day drinking so, or the mental image training. Uh, speaking of, of visiting places, the reason why Raditz <laughs> is brought up is because she's saying that isn't Goku's brother a or works for, like, a planet brokerage is what I guess they are calling it on the wiki. I forgot there was a lot of lore in this episode. I'm yeah, uh, well, there was, a, there was a little bit. There was like, I mean, come on, man. They referenced Frieza for the first time in these episodes. Then that not was, this episode, but and that was really, really cool. So it's also also worth noting that we do see Vegeta for a moment. They have like a small like Vegeta moment um, of him in his space pod trying to get back to uh, we don't know where, but we definitely do find out in episode forty, which we'll talk about uh, in a second. Uh, uh, and then uh, we did the we did the mental training, Krillin Gohan mental training. That was pretty cool, and then. We had the uh, what else was ar- there? arriving on the children's of space spaceship that it was is, a, that is reflective, and they oh they did send out a, a like a barrage a of fleet a, a fleet and somehow the Namekian was, spaceship of like completely eviscerated them. Yeah, well, I, n- what I don't know is was that fleet one was it drone powered ships or was it were they was not related to the kids oh, or was that just a different antas? antagonistic force that was not even remotely explained because actually. if it's if it's because it wasn't right but if it was attached to the kids not that i'm saying it's not self-defense but bulma launches a a laser and disintegrates most of the opposing is that force. wait is that what they meant by i don't know when they're like, like they like, destroyed our i don't friends. know i don't know and like even but if that is like that's really not something you could like. I think this is a misunderstanding. Nano, if you like disintegrated half my family and then you were like, oh, I didn't even mean to do that for real. Like you shot at me. I'd be like, it's too late, bro. Like it's too late. It's you disintegrated half my family. It's dust. But yeah, then after that, they get absorbed into a mirror. Into a mirror, which turns out to be the children's spaceship. And then we go on a trip of just running through the spaceship and trying to avoid. I forgot. Traps. This episode was boring as fuck, huh? We didn't even see the kids until did, the very end. We did get to come on me, huh? True, because they're like running into different like mouse traps. I was, I was gonna say, but we cannot forget the most iconic, which is the literal true mouse. Like, like yes. they were dead ass playing the mouse trap, popular home board game on Bulma. It's still so weird that that was the way they triggered the mouse trap. Like, it could have just been that when she picked, like when they interacted with any bit of the table, it just like, hi, got her. But it was, it's. Sh- she interacted. It shoots a knife over into a button. The button then makes a pillar fall, and then the actual trap falls just on the Bulma. It was a lot of work for a simple mechanical trap that cavemen have been using for, for years. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, this was... Look, I know we talk, we, we talk up Bulma a lot on this show. We do. And and she had some... What was her crazy feet in this one? Well, oh, it's oh, in the, oh, the, next the next episode. episode. It's in the next I'll episode. Stop. That's why... Look, look, we'll get into that. We're, no, we're, no glaze here. No I, glaze. I, I know this show... Look, we want to glaze Bulma. We want to talk about the feats, but let's be honest. This episode, she was... You want to glaze Bulma? She was a raging alcoholic this episode. Very mean, very messy, and also fell for a trap that not even rats fall for nowadays. Um, so bad episode for her all around. This is now two episodes in a row where Bulma has kind of been... Uh, is, is raging alcoholic like a no-go for you? Like in a partner? Yeah raging raging alcoholic yeah i think would be <laughs> i think a raging because like raging makes it sound like like you drink and then you're like 
mad. Okay, what? Okay, but like, what about a like a, <laughs> a, a like a happy, giggly alcoholic? I feel like alcoholic still implies like. I was, I was gonna say so like if, if like she moves in and then I guess I, I could be this, friends. I could be friends a with a giggling alcoholic. I don't, I don't know. I don't know enough about about your actual IRL, and you don't know enough about mine either. But if, if in a real situation, she moves in and every day. Every day she drinks and gets she's, mad. Yeah, she's drinking and getting mad at you and yelling. <laughs> yes, get and so the like, fuck out of my house, bitch! What the fuck? <laughs> That's a dumbass question. But if okay, like in a partner, maybe I wouldn't want them to kill themselves with over copious amounts of alcohol. Uh, but if they were like a giggly alcoholic, then they could stay in my house. Yeah, I wouldn't mind that. If they were messy like her, she might still have to hit the bricks though. Especially if she was like, you have to clean this up. I don't know if I'm doing that. <laughs> Why would you not like raging alcoholic? You'd be like, oh you quirky behavior oh no. no what about what about funny alcoholic but what if it was bulma with like the world's money and i would probably you just mean she's rich and she'll pay me it's bulma specifically but in the real world i mean yeah if she has those connections and rich and like capsules then yeah okay she can stay uh. i need that money bro i'll take the money <laughs> I'll take the money. I mean, at that point, it's just my job, right? Like now it's just my job to look after her and clean up and get yelled at so I can do that. Okay. But uh, I, yeah, if, if it's a job, then it's a job. Uh, so they, they capture Bulma. She's now like hung up and like actually captured. And she's done for. And then we hear a voice and I'm like, it does hit me a few, a few minutes later. I'm like, wait, because they still haven't fully revealed who these people are. And I'm like, was that a child's voice that we heard? Yep. It was like space children that come out and are like surrounding everyone. And then it basically ends. I will say I do like the designs of, of their race. Yeah. They're pretty much just humans, but with like sci-fi clothes and goggles, which is pretty sick. No, I agree. Um, I do want to mention that Bulma is dead to rights. Like they have her cooked. Yep. In fact, they have like multiple guns, not even on her, but like pressed up against her. Like they basically have it in her cheek. Um, with just oh we got a picture on the case yeah they <laughs> they uh, yeah, Nana was she, currently showing me a picture of Bulma <laughs> tied up with at least seven Halo assault rifles pointed at her, <laughs> which uh, is overkill for an elite. So it's probably overkill for a human being too. But that brings us to the end of this episode. It literally that's all major events here: Bulma, Gohan, and Krillin encounter the mirror spaceship and its mysterious occupants. Okay, Battles. and next? No, Go no, no. What was the other major event? That was it. Oh. What about battles? Do we got any battles? Go on versus Krillin in image training. Nice. Which, by the way, the aesthetic of that was sick. That's, yeah. The next battle? Uh, all right, here we go. Differences from the manga. No, no, no. You skipped the next battle. There is no next battle. Oh, okay. Differences from the manga. Here we go. We bet on this. We bet money on this. Key moments paycheck. Who's going to get it? Oh, damn. What is it? What is it? Wait, no, 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 no. The, the mental image training between Fuck. Gohan and Krillin is shown in the anime, unlike in the manga, but that does make it sound like... Oh, what? Well, yeah, no, that counts, that counts, that counts, that counts, that counts. Goku continue his training at the hospital despite his doctor ordering him not to... Not to... Oh! Ex- Damn it, I was wrong. Yes! So we're 50-50. That means it's no longer... Uh, and then Bulma, Gohan, and Krillin's encounter with the Mira spaceship is exclusive to the anime. Wow, shocker there. Who would have thought? That one is This is a shocking. two-parter, guys, by the way. this is We're not done we, with this No, arc. we still have some more Dragon Ball to talk here. Uh, okay, so when Bulma, sweet life? when Bulma was in her panties in the original Japanese, she can be seen drinking beer. So I guess maybe in the ocean dub or maybe what they showed on we Toonami. We got to see it. Because, yeah. yeah, we got to see beer. It literally said beer on the side of the can. Uh, go on and Bulma and Krillin's exploration of the mirror ship is reminiscent of Goku Bulma and Krillin's exploration of the pirate cave. <laughs> You're just going to leave us off on that? Well, that, was, that, it. that was it. Oh, that's it? That was, that was the total. But this is kind of cool. Bulma's outfit on the invisible spaceship, a gray tank top with gray panties. Oh, is yeah. it, go ahead. Go ahead. Is a reference to Ellen Ripley's attire at the end of the first film in the Alien franchise. I do want to bring it back uh, as you said that. Because the re- we didn't even bring this up, but while it makes some sense for go for Bulma to be in like pretty much a pajama fit, gray panties, a gray tank top, because she's sleeping, she's just chilling on the ship. Yeah, but they they just keep her in it so much to the point where they get absorbed in the alien ship. They come out of the ship, yes. step off the platform, and she goes, "Ah, oh, dang it! I forgot to put clothes on." And it. And it's they're, freezing in here. They're still on they're the They're still platform. right there. This would be like she if I just... stepped out of my house in a <laughs> snowstorm and went, ah, oh, dang it. I only have my boxers on. <laughs> and then I said, nah, it's all right. I'll just. Could have just went this. back up, got clothes on, come back down. But no, they decide to enter in. And, and one of the traps literally melts Krillin's hat. 
Yeah. Oh, Krillin loses his hat this episode. We do have yeah, a death pretty, this episode. I'm pretty sad about that. It's actually. a Kame hat, though, not the Kuririn hat. So we're, we're, we're still good. This is kind of a cool one I want to bring up really fast on the trivia. Uh, last of the trivia. Okay. Uh, this is one of the few. So trivia. This is one of the few times where the edited Saban dubbed version of an episode and the funny redubbed version have the same title. They didn't change it. Okay. It I also it also mentions the uh, world's break. strongest advertisement that was not here. Yeah, don't break what you can't. Uh, don't wait. What? Don't fix what ain't broke. All right, Dotto. It is go time. It is time to give our ratings for this episode before we move oh, on. Man, this shit was so boring, bro. To the next one. I don't know that I loved this. No, I'm, I don't think I'm being a harsh critic by saying that this was whatever. All right, classic so filler. We gave nursing wounds. You gave it a five. I gave it a six. Yeah, I don't know, dude. I. I gotta think. I don't really have to. All right, I know, I know what I want to give it. Oh, you do? Yeah, What's I'm that? ready. All What's right, that? three, two, two one, one, four. Oh, yeah, me too. I didn't know how. I, I forgot we both say it at the same time. Sorry. It's our first rewatch back. We still have another score to say. I held it up though, so you know it's genuine. I, I, I held up four. It was subpar. Yeah, I wouldn't watch it again, so I don't think it's a five. Um, but. It's not I, dueling Piccolo. I do think, I mean, I'll probably end up watching it again because I eventually watch Dragon Ball with my son, I think. But if I ever do a rewatch in the future, this, I'll just be like, oh, it's that episode and I'll skip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Thanks. I don't, I don't really need that. All right. So that brings us to episode 40. Yes. Can we, come on. We made, we made it to 40. 40. Yeah. <laughs> That's huge. Four episode oh. 40 of Dragon Ball Z held captive, which is. It's it's actual name was really for real. There's a there there lies Namek, Planet of Hope. No. Fuck. We're cooked. It's the fifth episode of the Namek saga and the 40th overall episode in the Uncut Dragon Ball Z series. This episode first aired in Japan on March 14th, 1990. Its original American air date was August 22nd of 2005. Don't get now, your hopes up, guys. I, I just want to point out yeah. That if you're questioning that I said 05 on this and you're like, I definitely know that I watched it before that, it's because this is a redub when they finished the full dub. Oh, oh, is is that the case? Yep. Oh, interesting. I wonder when would do you I guess that would probably fix sometime in the Namek arc. Like once they get into it. That will that should fix again around episode sixty eight or so. Damn, we have a long way to go. Yeah. We'll we're My we, God. We will we will start hearing Faulkner OST in about what's 30 episodes. I mean, I can't wait for that. What's what's crazy about this episode, though, is somehow I think even less happens in it. Yeah. I don't um, really think anything more happens. It's pretty much we pick up in the same scenario we were. I want to be I want to be super, super. I don't know. I didn't. Okay, he's thinking he's I didn't hate it. I didn't hate this filler. I didn't either. I didn't hate it. I know we both just said we wouldn't rewatch it, but I didn't hate this filler. I didn't hate it. I didn't hate it either. It wasn't like uh it wasn't as entertaining as the adopted kids, though. The most interesting thing is the fact that the kids think that Bulma, Krillin, and Gohan are working for Frieza. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Is that that's probably the, these guys have run in with Frieza, Frieza Force members. Nothing too crazy other than that. Like that is literally it. The biggest thing is we get a flashback of one particular kid. Who sees Gohan's eyes and remembers his father, father sitting died. in a fire. Yeah, burning alive in a fire or something. Getting shot it's by the one and only Kui. Kui. So that we do get to see Kui a little early. They're, they're trying to gas it up. They're making him look real intimidating. Um, and I think he is going to be intimidating. I bet he wins. I bet he's going to be like one of the biggest forces in this coming up arc. Oh, yeah? Yeah. But uh, I mean, other than that, they what is this? I mean, the episode is basically just our, the, you, our heroes proving themselves. Did you get your Kui figure arts? No, I didn't. I feel like you got to be a real Vegeta fan to. I, buy I, that. I missed that one actually. And you the, missed it. Now the, you can't do the poses. I, I hate premium Bandai. I forget shit all the time. I miss Super Seventeen. I love Super Seventeen. Well, you can't pose Vegeta with Kui now, which <sighs> makes know, I'm gonna have to pay aftermarket prices. Oh my sucks. gosh, you're done. Yeah, there's not a lot to talk about with this one. Uh, there was a character named Zeshin who's like the leader of the the kids. He is cool though. Uh, the whole storyline and why these kids are like alone is that. Freeze the Frieza force was essentially sent, killed all their parents. These guys fled in a mirrorized spaceship, which is how they were able to survive. Is it? They, it yeah, they bring it, up that they're the only ones that survived. Like other ships got out and they got blown up because they weren't 
invisible. They weren't invisible. And I want to know why they specifically got the invisible ship. Why was that just not a feature they're children. of the ships? They were thinking like, oh, oh yeah, why didn't like all the what? ships just have that feature? Yeah, Quick, it's... everybody in the ships. Ah, no, that one. You guys go in the invisible ship. We're taking the, they're going to be looking for for the ships they can see. The, the plot hole still for me though is how in the hell. So again, in the previous episode, like we see Bulma and all of them fly into the mirror eye ship. They get absorbed pretty much. But then once we find out the whole ship is mirrorized, how like did they perfectly hit like the, the spot where they could go in? Like what the, the only fuck? way it works is if they hit like the garage. If the garage was yeah. open and they just flew into it by accident. Otherwise, it's like what 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 happened? Because this is important, you bring it up because um, a big moment of this was they uh, flew into a meteor belt. So while Krillin and Gohan are dealing with that by like physically saving people. This is where Bulma redeems herself. She gets in the captain's ship. And with one day of experience of flying a ship, she's locked in, typing. Dude, the animations for while she's typing to go out of the ship where she's just dodging every asteroid. She said, where's the accelerator? To the left. <laughs> Moving like down. Crazy. Yeah. So, But they can't absorb any of the meteorites. They can't pass through them. It is a physical ship. They yes. are able to get hit by stuff. Yes. Just not in the one section where it's it's working. It's really working like uh the newest version of the Invisible Man. Yeah, it, it is Have you seen that? No, who's that? The Invisible Man? I mean it's pretty hard to see him. Exactly. They the the new version of it, they made it to where he's wearing a suit. Oh. Yeah, it's like some mission impossible shit. It's really just a suit that like, just like inviso nanotech. Yeah. Yeah, just I can't see me. Yeah. Uh, That's actually probably the most possible way to do it. It's 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 basically that. So I, I would say the biggest thing to note from this episode, I mean, we basically just progress past the kids. I mean, the kids don't mind you; they're gone. Bulma saves the ship. Um, Krillin and Gohan save some of the kids from a, like a metal piece falling, which then they're like, "Look how strong they were! They're clearly Frieza's henchmen." And then they're like, "Dude, if they were Frieza's henchmen, they would just killed us all." And they're like, "Oh, good point." And then we see a we see the reveal of the kid that looked at Gohan and clearly got like a cut or whatever and he like takes his takes the thing off his scar and show, reveals it and he does like a swoosh looking effect that looks kind of like Yamcha for a second uh but Vegeta gets to a place to get repaired he gets in the oh yeah I forgot that happens he lands on like a, yeah. a freeze up planet like outpost there and they're confused that's why he's like a alone because there's no Napa space pod they do ask about Napa B he's not getting out of his space pod then they go and look and they're like what the fuck he's like that's embarrassing. Out. That's got to be embarrassing. He's getting juiced. What's going on? And so they get him out. They put him into an uh, incubating thing, and then uh, presumably, fake Namek is real. Yeah, it ends on the because the the kids give him a oh, shortcut. The kids give him a shortcut. They go, hey, if you want to get to Namek really fast, go through KG one zero three six. And as soon as Bulma and them get out in the ship again, she gets drunk. Immediately, she goes to sleep. yes, immediately she immediately drinks beer, puts in the coordinates, crashes, and then. They fly through like a dying nebula star. Yeah, which is like shaking everything. And she's still staying asleep. And she ends up in Krillin's lap. And then, of course, then she wakes up and slaps Krillin because she thinks that he's... Swing first, ask questions later. Yeah. Um, so major events here, just to make sure we don't miss anything. <laughs> yeah, major events. Bulma, Gohan, and Krillin hear about Frieza for the first time. That, that is true. Cool. Bulma that, is that officially cool the first character Frieza. to recognize Frieza. Yes. Vegeta... Ar okay. Vegeta arrives at Planet Frieza 79. Wow. That is lazy as fuck, Frieza. You got to be so full of yourself to not only name a planet after yourself, but 79 times? Yeah, holy shit. That is a little crazy, bro. Bulma, Gohan, and Krillin arrive at fake Namek, believing no! it to be a real Namek. That is actually <laughs> No! <shit. laughs> fuck! That's crazy. God damn it. It's actually just called fake uh, Namek? What is the point of this stupid planet? Uh, uh, we Namekians created a fake <laughs> lie planet we didn't want anybody to find it us. doesn't even look like namek though like we knew it wasn't namek it doesn't it was green no oh, namek doesn't look like that though okay okay i didn't know you 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 know a real namek when you see one yeah 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 okay uh, i respect that <laughs> yeah all right difference from the manga <laughs> hang on before i actually read this how much do you think is zero percent not even a one not even a one thing is gonna be not real. even vegeta <sighs> vegeta might vegeta might be real Vegeta's, I think I'll, I'll say vegeta's real no way. There's no way they do the fake Namek thing in the manga, right? Nope. Nope. No shot. No. Okay, okay. Here we go. No. Events involving Bulma going on Krillin's journey, such as encounter on the mirror ship, and their arrival to fake Namek is exclusive to the anime. Come on. Goku receiving an... Oh, this was the needle episode. This is where oh, Chi-Chi yeah. said you're a bitch. 
Uh, Forgot about that. Goku receiving a needle injection, much to his dismay, is exclusive to the anime. Wait, so that means the free the Vegeta stuff might actually be legit. They yeah, they didn't. They, they didn't it say out. it wasn't. They didn't say it wasn't. Okay. All right. So we were right. I'll take it. Big wins. Oh, that's kind of cool. This episode establishes for the first time Goku having uh, trip of trypanophobia, trypanophobia. Fear of needles. Yeah. Um, it is later shown that Goku retained his fear of needles in GT episode Hidden Danger. Wow, that's a very late payoff, man. We have to wait till GT. That's just crazy. Though this episode is almost entirely filler, it serves as a de facto introduction of Frieza to the series even though he did not appear until much later in the original manga. A similar case was presented with Tien, uh, who in the manga was introduced at the 22nd World Martial Arts Tournament, but in the anime was first introduced in the filler before his official debut. Of note, the Ocean Group dubs of this episode apparently describes the invasion of Bun's planet as being led by Frieza himself, bearing an identical appearance to Kui as opposed to Kui leading the invasion, in the invasion of Frieza's supporters. Well, yeah, that's just kind of dumb. Yeah. Yeah, no, Kui was there. So that's confirmation that it was Kui. That is confirmation it was Kui. Because we did definitely say that was Kui, right? Yeah. Like neither yeah. of us wanted to go all in and say that was Kui for sure. Well, because. Yeah, you don't want to say stuff like that. I'm not trying to have my card taken away. So. Yeah, if you're wrong, then you lose your Dragon Ball fan card. Exactly. All right, Dotto, it is go time. Friend or foes? Friend or foe gets another four. It was the exact same. Damn, dude. I was going to go up, actually. Oh, sh- you were? We weren't. We were supposed. We got to call this out, I, man. I it's did. A yeah, three, I, two, for, one. I forgot. Oh, bro, I'm dude. rusty. Okay, I'm rusty, bro. It's my I, bad. I mean, not you saying it first doesn't change my answer. I was gonna go up because I, I, I don't know. Like, I feel bad giving them both fours because I don't think it's super. Like, I actually enjoyed my time with these episodes. I did well, like, roughly. I mean, like, could I choose watching this or watching uh, Krillin's Offensive, where I gave a coyote? I'm telling you right. I would give up one cool and defensive every time. <laughs> Kyo 10 is crazy. I forgot you did that. That is glazed <laughs> to the highest order. You just made that up. You made that up on the spot, yeah. and now you have to pretend like that's a real thing. Yep. <laughs> Dude, I was glazing the shit out of that one. Uh, but that episode was good. It was good. It was, pre- it was pretty that good. That is my favorite episode of Dragon Ball so far that we've watched. Easily. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that... I mean, these episodes are God, just... Had a, can we just rewatch that real quick? No, bro. We got to keep moving forward. Fuck, we got to keep moving forward. Man. I mean, okay. What if we watch the dinosaur episode? I actually think that would be kind of a funny bit. <laughs> a new friend. I it was a great it, episode. It would kind of be like if we if before we move past whatever this fake Namek shit is. Hope how many episodes do you think fake Namek's going to be? Just two. I'm going to say two again too. Just just two. What if it lasts more than two? No 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 no. What if it lasts more uh, than I, two? I, I don't believe in shit like that, man. I don't. I, I, <laughs> I didn't would, believe fake I, Namek I think, was even I a think thing. two. I think what we've seen so far when they want to when they want to extend the filler past one episode, they do two episodes. They do two of and then we're out. And we're done. Two? Well, surely, quick, God, quick it's drop, not even more than two. Quick drop, rotate. But I think it would be funny when we're done with whatever fake Namek is before we go into the real stuff. If we just rewatched the uh, there's no a way, new friend. Man. There's no way. There's it, no we just way. just to see just no, to see. We gotta keep and, moving and just, forward, and just to keep... be like, what like was that actually peak filler? We got, or we, got, were we, full we, of got shit? we got to save that for the end. We've That's grown our key so much special. now, though. We've grown so we're much. We're not even already. a year into the podcast, bro. Yeah, maybe right. maybe for a year special, but we already have a year. special. We already have a year special. All right, guys, we're kind of cooked, but. Well, if you want to support the podcast, go a little bit further beyond. Beyond? Oh, you can very click nice, that join nice, button if you're nice. on YouTube or if you're listening to us or you just want to save a couple bucks versus the YouTube tax. You can just go over to patreon.com slash key moments, become a key member, see all kinds of bonus content. Uh, we'll see you guys over there. We'll see you guys next week right here on this podcast. Dotto, I yes. can hear it. Oh, oh, wow. Where, where's that? And, and if where's you're on that YouTube, you can, you can click on Click on it. Where's that coming from? Where's that music coming from? 